Let's start with the if function. Now the if function, basically what it is, is you can check a specific condition. And then when the if function checks that condition, which is a logical test, it tests to see if a certain cell contains something or if a certain cell is greater than something. Whatever the test is, it'll check it and then it will return a value if it's true and that condition evaluates to true or if that condition evaluates and it's not true, it automatically will put in a false answer. As you can see, I put some spaces in front of the equal sign so that you could see the actual formula for the if statement. So there are three parts, logical test, value of true, value of false. Notice there's a comma in between logical test and the value if it's true and then a comma between the value if true or value of false. Within this set of parentheses everything needs to be together. There shouldn't be any spaces. There's only one um, instance where you can use spaces and that would be if your value is not a number if it's true let's say it's a word you would put that word in quotations and then you can have spaces in there we'll practice some one of those here so let's click in C5 basically the instruction there in red says a student needs five credits to graduate and we are to determine how many credits are needed to graduate. Well, in a sense, we know it's five, but how many more does each student need to graduate? Did they fulfill their five credit requirement or do they still need um, additional credits? And if they do need additional credits, how many more do they need? Okay, so in C5, hit the equal sign and type if and then put a parenthesis. So I'll do equal sign if. Now, what are we testing? We're testing to see if a student, how many um, credits a student has. Well, that's located in column B. So if we look to Mary, Mary has four class credits. So if B5, because that's where the credits are, we're testing to see how many credits Mary has. If B5 equals what? equals 5. A couple ways you could do this. If it equals 5, because that's what they need to graduate. So if it goes over, meaning Google Sheets goes over and checks B5, and B5 equals 5, that's the logical test. Okay, it's checking to see if B5 equals 5. If it does, after the 5 hit a comma, the logical test is done. So if B5 equals 5, what do we want it to do in this cell? So what value do we want here in this cell? What, what value do we want to appear? Well, if B5 equals 5, the next part is, if that's true, we need to let Google Sheets know what value we want placed in C5. The value we want placed in C5 is an actual word. It says the cell should say complete. So since it's a word, we have to hit the quotations and type the word complete. Now, what if Google Sheets goes over, checks B5, and it doesn't equal 5? Now we have to put in the value of false. So what do we want this cell to um, calculate if B5 equals 5? So let's put a comma. We have our logical test, our value if true, and now we have to put the value if false. So if B5 does not equal 5, so if Google Sheets goes over and checks and B5 does not equal 5, we need it to then tell us how many, or figure out how many, I should say, credits are needed. Well, how do you figure out how many credits are needed? Well, we know that 5 credits are uh, needed to graduate, Mary has only four, so five minus four would be one. We're just going to do that for the false answer. So I'm going to take and type in number five minus B5. Close my parentheses and hit enter. Yes, I want to autofill, so I'm just going to click the check mark. 
Anyone that has five should say complete. And then any cell that doesn't contain the number five, the if statement is going to take five minus whatever's in the cell uh, under class credits completed. So five minus four is one, five minus three is two. So there you have it. Now if I change four to one, then this over here should automatically change to four. If I change three to five, it should say complete. So now every time I add another student and how many class credits they have, I can just autofill this going down and it'll automatically calculate it for me. Here's a little bit different scenario. So we want to determine if the student is graduating. We just wanted to say um, yes, they are graduating or no, they aren't graduating. So all it does is place the word yes or no in the cell. So the question is graduating. Well, what is the what has to be met? What has to be true for them to graduate? They have to have exactly five credits. So if we use that if statement again, equal sign if, and we're testing how many credits that student has to determine whether or not they're graduating. Their credits are located in G5. So if parentheses G5 equals 5, we could do it this way again, comma, if it does, yes, they're graduating. And I'm just going to put the word yes, comma. Otherwise, if G5 doesn't equal 5, it's, all, it's just automatically going to be less only because the school only requires you to have 5 credits. So any other number would be no. So hit the check mark, and here you go. So anybody that has 5, yes. Anybody that has less than that, a different number is no. So if I do 1, or I'm sorry, if I do 5, it should say yes. I do 4, it should say no. Now scroll down to the bottom part and let's take a look at this one. Here are some people that are paying for their class. The class fee is $200 and some people paid a little bit of money towards their um, tuition bill. 100, 200, 100, and 100. So it says here student, a student must pay the $200 fee to attend the class. It says when he or she registers for the class, they may pay, they must pay half of the fee. Okay, well that makes sense. They paid half of the fee, which is $100. The other half is due at a later date. Determine how much is due. Otherwise, in the case, the balance is paid off. So when they register for the class, they have to at least pay $100. Can they pay more? Yes, but they at least have to pay $100. So we want to calculate in column D based off how much the person paid, whether or not they um, still owe $100 or if the balance is paid. So let's hit the equal sign and hit or type if. What are we checking? We're checking to see how much money was paid, right? And there's a couple ways you could do this. So I'm going to at least show you two different ways. So if I go over and I check, if I say if the class fee equals what's in C14. So if B14 equals C14, if they're equal, if they're the same, comma, paid space in space full. That's the only time you can have spaces. Put your quotation after the text paid in full, comma. But if B14 doesn't equal C14, we want to figure out, we have to think, we need to figure out how much is due. Well, obviously it would be the other $100, so we need to have it calculate that. So then we're going to take B14 minus C14. Because if it's not $200, if it doesn't equal $200, it's not paid in full, so you need to figure out how much is due. We autofill, and you can see this person paid two hundred dollars automatically, so it's paid in full. But let's say that somebody decided to pay one hundred and fifty dollars. They had to pay at least a hundred, which they did. Paid a little bit more, so the remaining balance should only be fifty. If they paid one twenty-five, then it should be seventy-five. 
if they paid 200, remember, your logical test was if B14 equals C14, then it's paid in full. While the PMT function may seem complex, it's really not. Basically, let's say that you want to buy a boat. Oh, and by the way, click on the PMT tab down at the bottom. You want to buy a boat, or do you want to maybe a motorcycle, possibly an RV? We're going to figure out how much your payment would be monthly if you took out a loan for a specific amount of money. Of course, when you borrow money from a bank, any lender, they charge you interest. That's what they get in return. We'll loan you the money up front, but you got to pay us extra money back because we're loaning it to you. And how long you're going to pay on that actual loan. So let's look at the boat one. We'll use the PMT function, but notice rate, number of periods, present value, and then it's going to talk about future value and then end in the beginning. And I'll go through this as we type it in. Okay, so we'll type equal sign PMT for the payment function, parenthesis. So if you notice, and I didn't show you in the if statement on the last um, sheet down here, but if you click this little question mark, it gives you an example. It gives you what each part um, of the um, payment function comes first, second, third, so on and so forth. And then it gives you a little explanation on what number of periods means, the interest rate, present value, so on and so forth. But I'll go through this with you. But if you ever need to, you can always click on that and then click the X and it'll come back here. So rate. The rate is given to us. So we're going to click on 5.5%, which is B9. So you think you're finished. However, when you pay um, an interest rate on a loan, it's 5.5% for the year. If we are trying to figure out what our payment is going to be per month, we need to put this in months as well. Again, an interest rate is always given to you in years. So we'll take B9 and divide it by 12. Comma. How did I know that? How would you have known that? Well, you'd have to learn how the PMT function is uh, programmed so you know to do that. So B9 divided by 12. So you'll pay 5.5% for the year basically divided over those 12 months. Now the next thing that comes is the number of periods meaning what is the length um, of the loan? How long will you be paying on it? Well, you'll be paying on it for four years, but remember, we're trying to figure out our monthly payment. So if you're paying on something for four years and you're paying it monthly, that's 12 months a year times four years. So four years be 10 times 12. 12, 24, 36, 48. So B10 times 12 would be 48, comma. It says present value. So what is the present value of the loan? Well, when you purchase it, we said the principal, that means the loan value. That is the business term. What is the principal balance? The principal balance is eleven thousand. If you paid on, if you paid a thousand dollars on it, you say principal is now ten thousand. So it's the value of the loan. So the present value is what is in B eight, comma. Obviously, at the end, the future value of um, in four years you want to be zero. You want to pay it off, and do you want the interest rate calculated at the end or the beginning? We want it to be calculated at the end when the payment obviously um, is made and the balance is reduced and that interest is paid on the lower amount. So we'll hit zero there again. And again, it's either zero or one for end and beginning. How did I know that? Again, you have to learn how it's programmed. So you would read about it, somebody teaches you about it. Now you know how to work that PMT function. So the other thing that I want to mention to you is when you hit equals, or when you hit enter, I should say, it's going to give you the amount that you will owe monthly, 255.82. But if you notice, the PMT function automatically puts a negative in front, and you can get rid of that negative. I'm going to stop the video now, and then I want you to pick up with the second video to finish out the last two. So go ahead on to the video number two.